Hello, good day, and welcome back. And today we'll continue looking at Go Fiber application framework. And today I want to look at routing and how you specify a routing path and the method HTTP method. Now, if we start off by going to the Go Fiber website, then we click on documents and we scroll down a little bit, we'll see it all for our welcome page. It does go over a little bit of some of the things you could do um, in terms of how you specify routes and handle routes. But Go Fiber provides a lot more than that to the point where it's really comprehensive and potentially confusing. I don't think you have to try and use everything, only you use what you need. Start out very simple, and if you need to do something, go check the documentation. And as you can see, a route is registered by specifying the HTTP method, a path string, and then one or more handlers. So you can have multiple handlers register for any given path. We're not gonna do that today, but we'll see that later on. So here's the thing to realize. When you set up a route, a route is really the unique combination of a path and HTTP method, okay? So let's say you have the route card slash, you have to then say, well, okay, which HTTP methods am I going to be registering for this path slash? And the combination of the path and the HTTP method is a route. So for example, if we were to click on routing under the guide section on the left hand side, there are two methods to talk about here. There's the HTTP methods, all right? Those are the get, head, post, put, that sort of thing. And then there's the method, which is a function in Go. So on the application type, there are methods that corresponds to the HTTP method. And that's where the first set of methods there represent the one-to-one -one correspondence between Go application method and HTTP method. And so in the event that let's say there is some HTTP method that is not listed here, so it's not get, head, post, put, delete, connect, option, trace, or patch, let's say it's something else, then you can use the add Go method on the type app to then add a route for that HTTP method that is not supported here. I mean, of course, you can still use it for one of the other ones that's already supported, but why? Why not use the syntactic sugar of the provided um, function on the type? Finally, let's say you wanted to add a handler or invoke a handler, I should say, one or more handlers for a specific path regardless of which HTTP method um, was used to invoke that path from the client. In that case, you use the all go method on the type app. And so that would be a nice, easy way for you to add a handler for all supported HTTP methods for that single path. Now, there are many, many examples, like I said, of how you can set up or specify a path. You can have like a fixed path, a dynamic path, you know, path with parameters, all these other things. Greedy matching, um, you can have um, constraints such as the type of a value, all these different things. I'm not going to show all of that because it's really quite a lot. We'll spend, you know, quite a bit of time going through this. So the documentation has it, there are tons of examples. So I just want to give you enough to get you started, but I encourage you, if you ever find yourself having to do some exotic path or you want to match something really strange, check out the documentation and they have a ton of examples down at the bottom. So let's jump to our code examples. So here I am at the command line and I'll just copy episode three to get started. I'm going to change the directory 04 and then start up my chromium. Now we don't want exercise um, 224, so I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to modify exercise one to what we want and then go from there, copying it as we need. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of our function here that return a unique value for each request and then get rid of this go routine because we don't need any of that sort. The next thing I want to do is simplify our handler function because again, we don't need that. And for now, I'm going to get rid of application name from our configuration. 
because we don't need application name right now, though I explain why you might want to have an application name in your configuration or why you might want to have a server header value. But as I recommended, I like the idea of having a mutable set to true, so I'm going to set that true. Now let's simplify our path for this request. So we'll do a get request on the path slash books. So we're going to look for the string or that path string slash book. Now, of course, I give it a handle name that's appropriate that says get all books. Now, this is sort of like a REST convention that if you have a plural name in the path, for example, like this slash books, it's a get on it returns all the resources at that endpoint or at that path. So we'll say it all. Documentation or name here is to get all books. So we've seen this before or something similar to this. So nothing complex here. So let's just go into our example one directory, start up our task. And as, we could, as we've seen before, it register our callback for the head method also. So we're not going to worry about that. I'll test it. We see that it works fine. So here's what I want to do. Though. I want to pull out my handle functions into their own file only because I don't want our main that go to get too long. So it's easier to see things side by side if it's on a separate file. So I'll just do that. Once I create a new file, I have to fix a few things. So for example, slog is now part of the log package. And of course, we want Go Fiber 2. The other thing is that our task, the way it's written, it only looks for changes for main.go. I needed to look for any changes to any Go file regardless of which subdirectory it's in. So I'll make that slight change to our task that go and restart our watch. So this should now build our application just fine. And then we've made it so that any change now we make to any one of our Go files should work. So, yep, I can see that how this is working just as before, so nothing new. So next example is going to show you what happens when you have multiple paths with the same name except for different case. So in this example, Instead of saying slash books or lowercase, I'm going to have slash book with uppercase B. Now, I would highly recommend that you don't create paths where the path name is only different because of different cases. You're going to have a lot of issues with documentations and users invoking the wrong thing just because they didn't type the correct uppercase or lowercase. They either got not going to have things work or they're going to invoke something different. So my suggestion is always stick to low case paths and don't have more than one that could potentially be matched on different things. So for example, we're going to say that oh, we have two paths here, slash book with low case and slash books with uppercase. And notice how we have different handlers for them. Now, if we go back to our command line and build um, our new application here, you'll see something very interesting. If we look at a list of handlers that are specified, you'll see that oh, something look missing. And we can see here that there's a problem too when we invoke it. When we invoke um, the separate path, we still get the exact same handler, which is the lowercase, which was the first one. But the second one that was registered with the uppercase, it seemed to register the handler, but not the name. So in order for this to work, we can set case sensitive to true, which basically tell Fiverr that I do have case sensitive paths. And now you can see that now it registered the name and it does look like something's different. And now if I invoke it, you can see it invoked the handle with uppercase and I can invoke the handle with lowercase. But once again, I would not recommend that you use um, this sort of thing where the U paths need to worry about uppercase or lowercase, which means the paths are case sensitive. So I don't recommend you ever configure case sensitive to true. All right, but for this example, I'm going to leave it. Or for these set of examples, I'm going to leave it because we're just going through examples. I want to show you that, point it out to you. All right, so let's move on to example three. In example three, we're going to pretend that we want to be able to get a very specific book. For example, we want to be able to specify an ID for the book. And in order to do that, there's a way we can specify the path to say there's an element of it or part of it that's dynamic. 
We've sort of seen this already. We saw this when we use colon name. And we'll do the same thing here, except we're not going to use colon name. We're going to use colon ID. So let's change to our directory to make sure that we're going to be running the correct code. Start up our task watch. And if, let's create a new endpoint and we'll call it slash books. And we're going to use lowercase books. I don't want to fool around with having uppercase. And we'll use colon ID. And so what this says is that ID must be in the pad. It must match this pattern. However, the ID thing is now we're not looking explicitly for ID. ID is like a placeholder. It's the dynamic name we're going to give to whatever follows slash books. Okay. And note also, it says specifically only one thing should follow slash book. So we'll see. I'll show you what I mean by that. And so this is, for example, you're going to use to say, I want to get a very specific book. Again, this is just sort of some convention that people use with REST. So let's update our handler function here to say that oh, we want to get a specific book by ID. And of course, we need our book ID. So use a structure login. I'm going to also log the book ID. And we need to get that book ID from our context. And so we've seen this before. The context provides this params method, which we talked all about the last time and why I'm using immutable. And so now I'm going to get the value of ID. So let's go test this out. Notice I can still get all books, or I can get a specific book, and I get book ID 1. I can get book 2. Again, we've seen this before. And if I leave it out, it matches or falls back to the previous case. Now, there are things you can do, like put a question mark, a plus, and that changes how these values are read, but I'm not going to do any of that here. I will leave that for you to read in the documentation because then this video is going to be very long trying to do all the different ways in which you can specify paths. So I'm not going to do that. Let's move on to our fourth example. And we're going to make sure that we're modifying the correct file. Um, there's always an issue when you try to do this that you're not you modifying the, the file you think you're modifying. So it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> we go to example four. We're going to run that. And now let's modify our example. And so now I want to show you what happens when you use a optional um, argument. So here we're going to instead use authors because, well, we already use a book and we already have book colon ID. So I don't want to change that. So I'll leave that. I want to leave that so you can see um, the changes as we go along. So I want to say get authors, get all authors or author by ID. And this is what is the member. So in this path, what it's saying with the question mark is that ID may or may not be specified. And so this allow you to essentially combine the route that we have on line 17 and the run route on line 19 together. So it, instead of two separate routes, we essentially get the two in one. And you'll see when I write the handler function here. So Again, we can either get all authors or if an ID is specified, we get a specific author. Now we still get an ID, but this time it's the author ID. So let's change that. And the thing is, we don't know that the ID is always present. Remember, when we put just colon ID, it means that it only matches if it's there. So we know that in the case of our get book by ID, we had a value there. In this case, since the ID is optional, then it's not guaranteed that when our handler is called that there's definitely a value there. So in that case, we have to check and see. If there's no ID, then the user is requesting all authors. And if they specify an ID, then and only then they want a specific author. And so we can see that with authors, we can pass it, call it without any parameter, or we could call it with a parameter. And it works again, just as if we had the two endpoints for books, where we had book books endpoint and slash book colon ID endpoint. Now, notice here that if we try to specify more than one subpath, not just, you know, like an ID, but in this case, where we do slash name slash thing, that doesn't match because the path specifically said there's only one thing 
optional after the first slash and it doesn't match any more um, slashes. There's a way around this. So in this case, what we can do is use the asterisk to mean any number of subpaths. So in example five here, we're going to say we want to add an endpoint for items. And we want users to be able to request either all items if they don't specify anything after items, or if they specify anything, regardless of if it's one value or multiple values as subparts, it's a way of sort of filtering down that item, right? So it could be items alone, or it could be items slash some number, or it could be items slash type five slash name. So anything like that, right? So we can sort of dynamically allow the user to specify any sort of path, and then we use the information in the path to figure out how to best find the item that they want. So this is going to make more sense once you see what the handler I'm going to do with the handler using this wildcard. So the star or asterisk here is a wildcard. I'm just going to copy our previous handler for you know authors one, and of course I have to change the name. So I'm going to call it just get items. Now I can call it get all items. Remember. We don't know that we're getting all the items because it's going to depend. But here we have to fetch the star, the asterisk. So, okay. So let's think about what star means in this case. We have slash item slash star. So what we're saying is we definitely have items as the things that we're going to be talking about, the resource. And star is going to be the modifier, which is going to be additional information we can use to help us determine which set of items or how the items can be returned. So you're going to see a number of examples, not today, but if you look around, you will see that people might use it to have filter equals whatever, or you know size equals to say how many pages or something. So you can do that sort of thing and make it truly dynamic. Of course, if you really want to just support specific things like filter or size, it's better to use a actual parameter placeholder where you can say that oh like size is an integer and filter is just these set of values but again there are examples of that in the documentation if there are slashes in that extra value we're going to split that and figure out all the other individual path parts so we can use that for you know processing additional processing we can look at it and say okay it is the name is it the type is it whatever size or something like that so that's all I'm trying to demonstrate here is that star can now accept multiple paths or subpaths. If we run our example five, and then we let's just try and do a simple test. Um, so we can of course ask for items, and that works. We get in all items. We can then ask for let's say a specific item, and notice how our subpath has the value one. We could then ask for, let's say, item slash name slash type slash one, for example. Again, we can type anything at this point. And notice how we can separate those and um, get the individual name, type, and then the number one. We can then say we want item slash one slash type slash three. I, I mean, the sky's the limit at this point. Really, the fact that we use star tells us that oh, we can essentially specify anything. And notice star is different then when we use colon ID, when we use colon ID, we could not specify any slashes because that's represent a actual subpath. So my recommendation is don't use star unless you really want to accept just about anything from the user. Otherwise, use constraints within your path to see what kind of things you're constraining and you can constrain them by the type or some regular expression or something like that. With that said, I think this is enough in terms of getting us started with how to specify a route, what a path might look like for a route, that you can have multiple methods for a path. Again, we didn't see an example with multiple methods. That's because when we talk about uh, middleware, we'll see that. In the next example, we're going to see um, how to use static files, and then later on, we'll talk about middleware. Now, before I go, if you've made it this far and you watch a video and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for your patience. Thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And again, just a reminder, 
if you'd like to support the channel and you're in a position to do so because you either can make a monetary contribution through PayPal or Patreon or some other means, or if you or anyone you know is concerned anything Tesla, even if it's just a test drive, please use my Tesla referral handle that you see on the screen. That would be greatly appreciated. Take care. See you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.